Happy Devil's Night, everybody. It is time to talk about the Crow franchise. If you're just finding me for the first time, I just reviewed all four of the Crow movies in depth. I'm going to put a card above each of their placements so that you can see those full-on reviews if you choose to. But we're here to rank all four Crow movies. Now, this is a franchise that I am pretty new to because I love the original film, but never had the heart, never had the interest to watch any of the sequels. So these were all first-time watches for me, and wow! The level of varying quality across this franchise is pretty astounding. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and get started with the worst of the worst, the bottom of the barrel of the Crow franchise. And I'll be honest, I debated for a second on what film to put at the bottom, but ultimately I did land on the Crow Wicked Prayer. Objectively, there is no doubt that this is the worst piece of shit in this entire franchise. Every single decision that they made in this movie from an idea standpoint, to a production standpoint, to a casting standpoint, certainly, all the way down to the execution all across the board, it's baffling how bad this movie was. I almost put it at number three because I do think parts of this movie cross over into that unknown realm of so bad that it's good. I could probably watch this movie and have an entertaining time just laughing at how ridiculous it is, but it just didn't feel right. It didn't feel right putting this anywhere else but number four. So if you're somebody that uh, can buy Edward Furlong as a tough action avenger, going across to Angel and a couple of other random castmates as a devil cult, then this is the movie for you. If saying that right there just makes your ass clench, yeah, you're probably not gonna like this movie. Number three is The Crow City of Angels. Now, I almost put this at number four strictly because it's the most boring of all four of these movies. This one really has nothing new to say. There is a big campaign out there amongst Crow fans to finally get the director's cut of this film because what was originally intended for this movie is not what we actually have seen. They had a production thing go on where Harvey Weinstein went in, changed this movie, hacked it down to pieces, took out everything that was unique or interesting about it story-wise, and just made it into a cheap carbon copy of the original film, and that's all we have to go off of. So being that's the only cut we have to go off of, all we have is a cheap carbon copy of the original film. Nothing about this movie is as interesting, as exciting, or as well-produced as the original. Vincent Perez as the crow here, he's okay, doesn't really stand out that much to me. All of the villains here, they're okay, they don't really stand out to me. You even got Thomas Jane here and they completely waste him, even though this is him before he was the Punisher, the Thomas Jane that we all know and love, at least most of us. And ultimately in this cut, the whole thing with bringing Sarah back from the first film and having her kind of be the shepherd of this new crow and this love story and all of that, it's destroyed. Like there's just nothing here that develops that. So even when you get inklings of that relationship, it's just weird out of nowhere. It doesn't make any sense. And the whole climax of this movie is destroyed by a garbage CGI effect that could have been pretty cool involving a murder of crows. Nonetheless, it's a movie that I'll never watch again because there's nothing in here that makes me wanna watch this over the original. Number two is going to be the only sequel that I actually say has some merit, and that's The Crow Salvation. Now, I was not expecting anything from this movie because I walked into this franchise thinking that City of Angels was the sequel that everybody tolerated. But Salvation actually has the most going for it. It was the first one that went straight to video because of the lackluster performance of City of Angels. And even though I think that the main guy that is playing the crow here, I believe Eric Mabius was his name, I don't think he's very good at all. Everybody else surrounding him is actually pretty good. Kirsten Dunst is good. You got an early Walton Goggins who's great. I love seeing Fred Ward as one of the big villains here. And I think that this movie has a lot more style to it simply because they go for a darker, meaner tone. This is a much more bloodier movie and a lot more of a uh, gritty movie than the other ones. Even The Crow, the original being as dark as it was, it was much more of a fun comic booky experience. This almost crosses the realm into horror thriller to a certain extent. And watching this guy go on this rampage to take out everybody that murdered brutally his girlfriend and then accused him and got him executed by an electric chair, I thought it was actually a halfway interesting story. So if I had a Blu-ray of this, which you can't fucking find anywhere, I actually wouldn't mind putting this one on again. It was decent. But of course, no question, number one in this franchise is the original Crow. This is one of the most kick-ass cult classic movies of all time. It's nowhere near the realm of the sequels. Even Salvation that I say is pretty decent. I mean, it's a gigantic leap to get up to the level of quality of the Crow. Of course, there's a little bit of bittersweet uh, aesthetic to this movie when you watch it because of the tragedy involving Brandon Lee, and it's hard. It's damn near impossible to watch this movie without part of you thinking of that. 
But getting away from that, I mean, Brandon Lee is awesome in this. He is great as Eric Draven. He is great as a lead role, and it really just sucks that this was the end of his career because I think he really could have been somebody big in Hollywood and could have given us a lot more of these awesome Crow movies because I think he was contracted to do at least three of them. I would have rather have seen those. I think everybody can agree that. But uh, the whole storyline here is a very unique, at the time, twist on the revenge thriller to where you get a guy and his girlfriend that are murdered. He comes back a year later for one night uh, on Devil's Night, the night before Halloween, to enact bloody vengeance on all of them. All of the villains stand out pretty well, even though they are a little bit over the top for my taste, but they're still enjoyable and they are still somewhat iconic for what this movie was trying to bring. I think that the visual style of this movie is awesome and ages very well for an early 90s comic book film, which just saying that automatically means it's shitty. There's a lot of variety in the action scenes. I mean, you get stabbings, you get shootings, you get fist fights, you get sword fights, you get even like parkour across the rooftop scenes. There's a lot of variety to the excitement that this movie brings. It's just a classic. It's hard to watch a movie like this if you are into that type of film and not automatically love The Crow. I mean, there's so much here for so many different people. I've never met one single person that watched this movie and said that they hated it or just wasn't for them. It's just a blast of a movie and it's absolutely number one. So what do you guys think? What is your ranking of The Crow franchise? I think this is one ranking that pretty much unanimously everybody's going to have just about the same ranking. Uh, so nonetheless, if you have a wild ranking or if you have a hot take, please let me know down below and give me a reason why. Don't just give me the list. Tell me why, because that's part of the interesting conversation we can have in the comment section is why do you like that one more or hate that one more? So as always, guys, thank you for watching. Please like and share this video. If you're watching me for the first time, hit that subscribe button. We just got through the Crow franchise. We got 31 on 31 dropping tomorrow, which is an annual ranking video we do on this channel in collaboration with other channels to where we have a whole bunch of horror franchises ranked together on Halloween night. That's going to be absolutely awesome. I'm really excited about this year. And then in November, to give you a little tease, we're getting into the entire Hellraiser franchise, which is something that I've teased since Spiral came out, as well as the entire Resident Evil franchise leading up to that new film. So much more excitement to come in the next month. Please do not miss any of that. Thank you for watching once again. And remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be.